Hey everyone, I'm Matt Everhart, driver for Grid Kings and a member of the Kind of Fast IRX group, and welcome to another track tutorial. This week, we're at Lucas Oil Raceway, a technical track built utilizing the infield of another asphalt oval. Lucas Oil has its share of difficulties and unique characteristics, which we'll be going over in this tutorial. Much like Iowa, Lucas Oil has two hairpins that are very important to drive correctly. After the first hairpin is the dirt section, consisting of a tight chicane followed by a straightforward jump and ending in a sweeping right-hander in the dirt that feeds into an asphalt hairpin. The rest of the lap is driven on the oval portion of the track. Let's hop into Kevin Carlisle's Subaru and take a look at a quick lap around this difficult track. As always, we'll go through an entire lap and then go over each corner and the joker. And there is a lap around Lucas Oil Raceway. Kevin ran a 41.364. Uh, you want to kind of aim for mid to low 41s. That'll be competitive. Um, if you can get it into the 40s, that's great. If you can keep it just around that, that high 40, low 41, that's going to be super competitive. But try to keep it below 42. This track is very unforgiving if you make a mistake. Um, it's it's really important to link each section of the track to keep your keep your time down. Uh, let's see what the temperature was. It was partly cloudy. Track was about 98 degrees, which is going to be this is default weather for i racing, so this is going to be pretty normal. Um, but lap times will go down as the temperature goes down. Lap times will go up as the temperature goes up. Um, I racing in that last um, in the December build introduced um, some new ways that tires react to track temperature, track surface temperatures. Um, they are half as sensitive now. So I know uh, with the last tutorial we did at Atlanta Long, um, it's usually super hot there. I've seen it at 117 degree track surface temperature. Um, you won't be sliding around as much if it gets that hot, but in, if, you always, if you look at it the other way too, you're not going to have superhuman grip at low temperatures, so it should kind of even everything out. Um, this lap, as always, was run with uh, what is now the uh, iRacing default setup. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the lap. Um, but in order to take a look at the lap, we need to take a look at the end of the lap. Because how you approach the start-finish line is super important to having your momentum up going into that hairpin. So if we go to the end of Kevo's lap, um, you are going to be approaching, here is the uh, the starting grid right here. This is how you're gonna be uh, approaching this first corner. Kevo comes around this hairpin right up against the wall. So when you're up against the wall, um, when you come out of the hairpin, you can floor it until it's time to turn in. Um, but when you're starting at the starting grid, you kind of got to feather the gas. You want to have enough momentum to where the car wants to stick to that outside wall, but not so much that you end up touching it. Because if you touch the outside wall, chances are you're going to be going so fast that you're kind of kind of get sucked into it, and it's going to be really hard to get off of. So you want to find that sweet spot from the start to where you're just the car just wants to hang out in this top lane right here. So if we go through, turn in point, you want to be on the lookout for this red sign right here. You kind of want to be in between that red sign and these tire marks right here. You start to turn in. And you see, as Kevin is approaching it, he's starting to let off the gas already a little bit once he gets to these tire, these tire marks on the wall. So you start letting off. He lets off 
he's almost at like I'd say 20-25% throttle here as he's turning in. What you want to do is turn in in such a way that you can get back to 50-75% throttle and hit this apron right here. You want to late apex this corner as much as possible. So if we look at this from the chase camera, far chase camera, he's up here, he starts turning in right after he passes these tire marks on the wall that are right here. He starts turning in, gets off the gas, heading down, he's off throttle right here as he's turning in just for a little bit, just to, enough to get a little more weight on these front tires to give him, uh, get these front tires some grip so he can actually turn. It's really easy here to carry too much speed and just the car will push. It's all wheel drive, it's super under steering, under throttle. It's really easy to just push and end up in this outside wall. Kevin gets off the throttle, he's back on it. You notice he's not full throttle until he knows for a fact that he's not going to slide into this outside wall. You can even see here he's leaving tire marks on the track because the car is pushing so much, but there's really kind of no way around it. Um, at this area of Lucas Oil, you're going to push a little bit. And if you look at his <laughs> his steering input, he is. Uh, I can. Why can I never find the cockpit camera? There it is. He is at over 90 degrees to the left because. When you just if when you're looking from the cockpit view, you can just tell that the car wants to push so much. He's almost full lock here, 180 degrees, trying to keep it off of this outside wall here. Let's go back to the entire lap. So as you're approaching the first corner here, it's important you're going to want to cut off as much as this corner as possible. You do not want to stay on the oval here. You're going to be doing nothing but losing time and you have to brake pretty hard to get the car slowed down for this hairpin that's up here. So he's going to start bringing it down. Good thing to look for is this X right here. This is the Joker exit entry line and here is the yellow line that marks the track surface from the apron. He gets on the gas about when he is crossing this Joker entry line right here. Um, you can wait until you're closer to this X. I would never get on the brakes further than where these two lines cross. That is just, you're going to hit that wall. Um, but it's super easy to lock a tire up. Um, and if you lock a tire up going into this, uh, if you lock a rear, you're going to lose the rear end. If you lock a front, the car's not going to turn. So it's, it's really important to hit this smoothly. So he gets on the brake. He's at about 50% brake on the apron. Down shifting down to fourth. I'm gonna come back up on the track surface. Don't get all the way back up here because I mean it's not really necessary and when you do that you're just riding up there for no reason or you're gonna lose time. So it gets down to third here and he downshifts to second uh, which is important because every time you downshift the car is going to gain a little bit more front grip. The car is gonna lurch forward. So it gets down to second while he's braking and heading into this turn pin in order to get as much front grip as possible. So he gets down to second and hits this this tire barrier. One well, didn't hit the tire barrier, but he hits this corner perfectly. I can't find cameras today. Far chase. So you want to get as close to this tire barrier as possible, but you want to have this hairpin be uh, have a little bit of a late apex because you want to drive as straight as possible coming into this straight right here. So he gets around it, and this is kind of a weird section of the track. This is kind of a cross between asphalt and dirt here. Um, so you'll have more grip than the dirt, but less grip than the asphalt. So he gets over here, and he if you watch, he's slow to get back on the throttle. He's on the throttle before he gets to this curb here, because uh, you want as much speed coming in here as possible, but it's important to not carry so much speed or you know give too much throttle input to where the car is not going to turn. If you hit one of these uh, tire barriers with the rear of your car, it's going to send the front into this wall. If you hit this wall with the front of your car, your front tires, you're more than likely going to bend a wheel. I have some kind of wheel damage and you're pretty much screwed for the rest of the race. So he's going over here, slow on the throttle. He's going to hit full throttle for just a little bit barely at all because you've got to get slowed down for this right here and this chicane is 
personally where I lose and gain the most time. Uh, it's really important to hit this smoothly and to hit this correctly. So it gets on the break. There's not really a good breaking point. Uh, maybe you can use these uh, IRX signs over here as, as a breaking point. You get to that last one and you want to start getting on the break. But he's already letting off the throttle, gets on the break, and downshifts to, to third. Well, actually, no, he's in second. Downshifts to second. And if you notice where he hits this corner, I'll remember where these are eventually. He is right on that tire barrier. Um, I don't think, nah, he doesn't touch it. And it, it's, <laughs> he's so close. The car model is kind of clipping through it. Um, but these curbs are going to give you more grip than the dirt will. So if you cut this close and get some tires up on this curb, you're going to get more speed coming to this straight right here. It's important to cut this as much as possible. Just watch out for this tire barrier because if you hit it, you're under braking and you've got, you know, you're, the car is turning, you hit that tire barrier, the rear end is going to swing to the right, you spun out in front of everybody and it's going to ruin a lot of races. So you want to cut this close but not too close. Kevin hits it perfectly here. You see he, he lay apexed it to where he's pretty much heading straight coming into here. But we don't want to be going straight. We're going to have to immediately turn to the right. So what Kevin does is, if you look at his steering input, he is turning to the left right now. He's almost got it. He's got it further than 180 degrees trying to get this car turning to the left. And once the car is about heading straight, you start straightening out the wheel. But he immediately goes full lock to the right. Uh, when you're in dirt sections like this, it's a lot easier to swing the rear end when it's already swinging the opposite direction. So if we look at the far chase camera, he's coming around this way. The rear end is swinging out a little bit. When he starts steering straight, that mo momentum of the front is going to swing the, the uh, rear of the car to the left. And when he hits on the gets on the brake he's still at about 180 degrees steering input you're gonna want to hit this you want to square it off as much as possible and get some tires up on this curb because it does give you extra grip um, but these tire barriers it's arguably well I wouldn't say it's worse than the previous turn but if you hit these it's going to do one of two things it's going to spin you or it's going to absolutely kill your momentum and you're going to need that momentum coming up here towards the jump so if we look at this section from the chase camera, full speed, on the brakes, late apexing up on the curb, swinging to the left, brakes, he gets a couple tires up on this curb, give him a little bit of extra boost, and he's going to be super patient on the throttle, super patient. If you come around this corner and you give it too much throttle, you give it some gas, you are going to push into this wall right here and you cannot hit this jump when you are too far out wide like that because you've got these tire barriers right here. Even if those weren't there, if you hit this too wide, you're not going to hit it straight. You're going to hit it with your right side of your car way too high. You're going to end up on the asphalt part of the track. We don't want that. So comes around this corner, brakes up on the curb, patient on the throttle, patient on the throttle, and to the jump you're going to want to definitely hit this jump towards the left so you get a good angle coming into this right hander right here so if we look at this again from the cockpit view on the brakes slowing it way down up on the curb swinging it right so we can swing it left patient on the throttle patient on the throttle all right now this jump uh like a lot of uh rally cross jumps This is kind of a, a weird mixture of asphalt and dirt, this whole jump area right here. So you do get some extra momentum um, when you're on the gas here. You're not going to sit there and spin your tires like if it was just dirt. But he comes up here. He's giving it brakes before he leaves the ground just to slow the car down a little bit and pitch the nose down um, so he can land it with all four tires at the same time and not jump too far because if you end up jumping this too far and gaining having way too much momentum if you hit it in the dirt section up here your the chances of damaging something on your car goes up significantly 
uh, it could lead to motor damage. Uh, Phoenix is real bad like that. But he comes up this jump, breaks while he's still on the surface a little bit. You notice he's not flooring it all the way. Uh, it's because he knows uh, what angle uh, his landing needs to be in order to have all four tires on the ground at the same time. So he gets all four down at the same time. And as soon as he gets to the bottom of this jump, he's already starting thinking about this right-hander. So he's got some steering angle to the right, watching his throttle. Now he's, he's, this is a really, really good thing to learn. Um, this is a kind of a dirt oval trick um, to where you want to play with the gas and the brake at the same time. So what it is, is he's having, uh, he's keeping momentum with the gas, but he's keeping tire spin down with the brake. Uh, if you think of it, if you're a, a, an oval person uh, with NASCAR, think of it as super speedway. You don't want to let off the gas when you're drafting behind somebody. It's better to ride the brakes so you're not losing momentum. You're keeping engine speed up, but you're slowing your momentum down with the brake. So he's playing with the gas and brake here. He's got a really, really good angle of approach. Uh, and he's going to keep it right up against this inside wall here. Let's see, where's my far chase? He's gonna keep it right up against this inside wall here. Now, it's important to not keep it too close to this inside wall. Since this is concrete, if you touch it, it's going to straighten the car out. And if you're giving it gas or giving it a brake, if it, straightens the car, if it straightens the car out at all, you're going to end up in this wall right here. Or it's going to completely kill your momentum. You're gonna have to slow way down to get the car turning again. So you want to keep it close to this wall, but don't touch it. He's playing with the gas and brake here. Just keeping it real close, especially you want to keep it real close in the exit of this corner right here because you want to approach this hairpin from as wide an angle as possible. So he's coming out of the sweeping right-hander. And he's going to start breaking for the hairpin right about where these two concrete uh, dividers end and the wall starts. So he starts braking, already turning to the left. If you look how far away he is from the turn, he's already turning left because he's got the momentum and he knows that this is such a tight hairpin, you've actually got to slide to the right and almost kind of drift it into this corner, but not too much. When you hit the asphalt, you don't want to be too sideways because then you're just going to be up here spinning your tires might end up clipping that outside wall. You wanna just slow the car down as much as possible and he's actually slowing the car down right now. He's not even applying that much brake. He's slowing it down by scrubbing speed off by sliding. So, I mean, look how you can just listen to the, the sound of the motor. I mean, he is so low in the RPM range as he's approaching this. And he's almost at 180 degrees turning to the left. So once he gets it, sideways he's actually counter steering a little bit because he doesn't want to you don't want to end up clipping this right here that's a good way to flip your car since you're already sliding to the to the uh to the left so much but right here he gets real close to this tire barrier real i mean real close to this tire barrier so once you hit this asphalt though he's going slow enough to where he's not drifting up here and blowing smoke everywhere but he's got complete control of the car but he is going incredibly slow and that's important it's going to feel slow going through this hairpin but in actuality it's the fastest way to get around here so if we go back to cockpit he's down in second gear with all these hairpins it's usually a good idea to get down to second gear get that weight transfer up front get as much front grip as possible and he's super patient on the throttle getting out of here too. Immediately, well not immediately either, he's slowly up to probably about two thirds throttle until he gets comfortable enough and knows that the car is not going to push up anymore. Then you can get up into full throttle. Go to that section all again. He's playing with the throttle and the brake, keeping up his momentum, but slowing him down at the same time, keeping tire spin at bay, already turning to the left. Keeping it tight, patient on the throttle, up against the outside wall. Now, here is very important. 
Um, we went over this at the beginning of the lap, but I'm going to go over it again. You were going to keep full throttle up on this outside lane until you get to about the end of these tire marks here. When you get to the end, you see Kevin's already getting off the throttle. So he's turning in here, almost all the way off the throttle, getting the car inside, picking up the throttle, getting down on the apron, and flooring it when he knows that he's not going to end up hitting the wall. And there's your lap. Let's go through this whole section full speed one time. So, down off the jump, keeping up momentum with the gas, keeping the tire spin at bay with the brake, keeping it tight up against that inside wall, not hitting it, already turning left. Patient on the gas, patient on the gas. Turning in between the tire mark and the red sign, being patient, being patient, full throttle. Nick has him a 41.364. Pretty quick. Um, and that's really what you want to do around here. I mean, it's super technical. Um, it takes a, a ton of practice laps to even get a clean lap around here. Uh, it's a very difficult track, um, especially in this turn one here. I mean, turn one at the start of a race, everyone's going to be together. This is a very tight spot right here. I always hit the wrong one. This is super tight. You're going to have 10 people trying to get into this one spot all together. Um, nine times out of 10, there's going to be an accident here. And if you look at the Joker exit, this is the Joker exit right here. So you've got everyone who decided not to take the Joker on the first lap here. Yeah, everyone who decided to take the Joker on the first lap here. Everyone's got to funnel into this tiny, tiny hairpin. Um, and it's super easy to get into an accident here. So if you are at the back of the pack here and you're approaching this first hairpin, just be super patient. If you are too aggressive here, uh, you might gain a position, maybe one, but you are risking complete catastrophe if you're too aggressive here. It's a really good idea to just be patient, hang back, let any accidents that are gonna happen happen in front of you, get around them, um, it's real easy to have a traffic jam here too because if you look this is super narrow if you've got one person They're gonna be taking up this much space There's barely enough room for one person to get by someone who's stuck sideways up against this tire barrier here so if If you've got an accident in front of you, like I said be patient um, You'll end up getting around them if you get into an accident here just let everyone buy. <laughs> I mean, if you if you try to, if you're stuck up against this tire barrier and you've got people coming up behind you, there's nothing you can do. If you stick it in reverse and floor it and try and get the car turned around, someone's going to end up hitting you in the rear. You've got wheel damage. There goes the rest of your race. Uh, if you're at the front of the pack here, just be mindful that people behind you might miss their brake marks or might come in here too hot. Um, if you didn't take the joker on the first lap, watch your relative. If you can look to the left, try and look to the left. Try and listen to your spotter if you've got someone on the inside. Uh, if you've got someone on the inside, you can take it too wide in here. I've seen it done. It's difficult to do, but just swing it out wide and just be super patient. Uh, if someone's being so aggressive that they're going on the inside and try and pass you in this hairpin, uh, chances are they're going to get too aggressive later on and end up hitting a tire barrier or spinning or something or making some kind of mistake that I'll let you get around them later. So just the beginning of the race, it is super important to be patient here and in the the, the, the uh, dirt chicane that's up here. Um, just be super patient. Passing the passing zones of this track, it's a whole lot easier to do it on the oval than it is anywhere else. Maybe even the sweeping right-hander if you can get around someone and in front of them before the hairpin. Um, but not a lot of passing opportunities here. Uh, under braking, this is a good spot. If you not dive bombing, dive bombing someone, it's a good spot to get by somebody. Um, but yeah, just at the start of the race and during the race, just be super patient in this hairpin right here. If you've got people in front of you, it's not worth screwing up theirs and the rest of yours race. Theirs and yours. That grammatically didn't make sense, but we're going to ignore that. So let's take a look at the Joker. All right, so here we are in the Joker. Now, this is just my opinion, and it's shared by the majority of Rallycross racers. This is the worst Joker 
on the schedule, period. It is terrible, and it is difficult, and it's an accident waiting to happen. It is more an accident waiting to happen than the Atlanta Jokers, which can actually provide some good racing. This, however, this Joker serves zero purpose, but we're stuck with it, and we can't even blame iRacing for it because this is an actual track that Red Bull GRC raced. This is the actual Joker that they used. It is terrible. But let's go over how to approach it, how to get through it without dying. Um, now, if when you look at the Joker, it's barely different than the actual line you take on the track. Um, you're more than likely not going to gain time by using the Joker. You can't use the Joker as a passing opportunity. Um, it's kind of a get it done at a time to where it's going to cause the least amount of damage, uh, which is usually when no one else is around you. Um, it's usually a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. I cannot stress how much of a terrible idea it is to take this Joker on the first lap. It is going to end, nine times out of ten, it ends in disaster. Um, and everyone's already trying to funnel into that hairpin at the same time, and you add in random people coming out of the Joker, people are going to end up being three wide going into that hairpin. It's awful. But uh, we have to take it. Uh, it's important. Uh, it's important not to touch anything while you're taking, taking the Joker. It's important to lose as little bit of time as possible when you're taking the Joker. Your Joker lap's probably going to be slower than the rest of your laps. But uh, let's take a look at the approach to the Joker. Coming out of this last turn, before you get to the start-finish line, you already want to start steering towards the inside. If you look, right here is the commit line. If you come into the Joker and over half your car is over this line, you're getting a black flag. Um, I think the default is like 10 or 15 seconds. That's pretty much your race. Uh, so you want to approach this Joker. Make sure I would keep your entire car below this line. Uh, we can see how close Kevin gets to it. I mean, he's got his entire car below that line. It's what you've got to do. So he gets down here. He's on the brakes hard. He brakes before he gets to this line, probably, I don't even think you can see insurance from the cockpit of the car, at least not well enough to use it as a breaking point. Not really. But you want to start getting on the brakes before you get to this joker line here. And he's on the brakes pretty hard. He's already at 50% brake when he hits this commit line. So you're on the brakes hard. He ships down to fifth. You, want, you can enter this going pretty fast, and it's incredibly sketchy. Uh, it freaked the crap out of me the first time I tried to do this. So you get down, down to fifth. He's going to downshift into fourth once he gets in here. These walls right here, this is concrete. Um, it's kind of like the concrete section at Daytona Short. If you clip that with the left front of your car, you're toast. You're done. Um, and you want to keep it away from these tire barriers here because if you clip that with the right rear of your car, like if you get a little sideways under braking, clip that with the right rear, you're going into this wall. So you want to keep it nice and smooth, carry as much speed as possible. He's still on the brake. Down to fourth now, I believe. With the cockpit. Yeah, he's down to fourth. Still on the brake, slowing down. Down to third, still on the brake. Down to second. Coming almost, he is at a crawl coming out of this joker. Let's take a look at the far chase. Slowing way down, almost to a crawl. There's no good angle to hit this hairpin from the Joker. I mean, you can come up here a little bit and try and swing it out a little wider, um, but if you've got traffic up here um, or, you know, your car is unsettled from this Joker, because it's not, it's not even, I mean, if you watch his car, he's bouncing all over the place going through this Joker. It's not a level surface. It's super easy to get uh, get your car unstable through here. And if you clip this wall at all, you're pretty much toast. So Kevin keeps it safe to the inside of here, in, uh, right up against the, the grass right here. Slows way down in the second, and then that's the rest of your lap. Just You can swing it wide here. Kevin drove this line just because he just recorded the Joker. Um, but as you're coming out of the hairpin here, you're going to want to drive it like a normal, like a normal lap. Just 
keep it up on the outside here and hit this chicane like normal. Let's take a look at the Joker entry and everything full speed from far chase. Down below the line, hard on the brakes, hard on the brakes, give you as much momentum as possible. Slowing down to a crawl and then keeping going. Let's take a look at it one more time from the cockpit camera. And it's safe, a lot of momentum, not a whole lot of brake on the it can make your car unstable, down to the crawl, and the rest of your lap. And that's it. That's Lucas Oil. Uh, besides the Joker, I really enjoy this track. It's a driver's track. Um, it, it rewards consistency and hitting your lines and keeping it smooth. Uh, like I said before, it's super unforgiving in that if you mess up, you know, it, it takes a couple turns for you to get back into your into your rhythm and get that momentum back up it really really rewards like I said just keeping it smooth keeping it consistent and not screwing up um, that the right dirt hander uh, especially uh, you take it too wide um, just remember you can play with the gas and brake at the same time to keep wheel spin down keep your momentum up while you're trying to slow the car down a little bit um, but yeah that's basically Lucas Oil I uh, hope you guys enjoy this week I know I will and uh, I hope to see you out on the track see you later